Um, it's hard to believe we're here again another year on uh, since the last one, which only just seems uh, very recent. Um, but thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. And yeah, we're excited about telling you uh, about the concept for this year. So let's have a look at what we're going to talk about. Um, so we'll do a bit of a recap and look at our journey so far with the Road Peace Challenge. Uh, we'll look at the concept uh, for 2024 and we'll look at how we can support it together. So the journey so far. I think there might still be people joining the meeting, so I'll go slowly at this point just in case, just let people uh, log in. So um, we began uh, in 2021 and the Road Peace Challenge was a concept created by Detective Chief Superintendent Andy Cox of the Met Police, as, as many people know. And I hope he's on the call at the moment. Um, I am I indeed, see... Rebecca. I oh, am indeed. brilliant. That's good. Because there's, there's a slide with your name on it, Andy. So uh, I'm glad you're uh, able to, 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 to say your bit when the time comes. Um, so there he is there um, in Crystal Palace in London, um, which he chose uh, because obviously that was the location of the first ever uh, fatal road crash uh, in the UK uh, in the late 1800s. And the coroner obviously famously said, we hope a tragedy like this will never happen again. And obviously, here we are now in this position. Uh, and many, many hundreds of thousands of people have been killed on the roads in the UK since then. Um, so there was Andy uh, setting off on a 200 kilometre run uh, during Global Road Safety Week. He was joined by others along the way, but it was very much Andy doing this. And it was incredible. Uh, it really got people talking and it really raised a lot of awareness and it also raised £53,000 for Road Peace which was absolutely incredible and thank you to everybody who who helped that to make that happen um, but I think what Andy and others realised is this isn't just about Andy doing this and, and about the Met and about London this is about the whole of the UK and about the fact that we all have this huge problem that we all need to do something about um, so we then went on to the 2022 and the 2023 challenge. Um, and by this point, we'd spread the word and we'd got more and more supporters on board. Um, importantly, we'd got bereaved families and crash victims who really wanted to be part of this, um, to take part in fundraising and awareness raising. We've got police, firefighters, safer roads partnerships, the NHS, police and crime commissioners. Um, and it really felt like this is it. We're all coming together here to make a united stand against road harm. And, uh, you know, to date, £140,000 has been raised, raised for road peace, which is just incredible because as a very small charity, which does so much, that is such an amazing amount of money. Uh, and we were so grateful that the concept uh, came about and that Andy, uh, you know, helped bring that all together. And we're looking forward to seeing where we can go with it in 2024. So we've had some incredible support from uh, people like Chief Constable Joe, Joe Shiner, who's obviously the NPCC lead for roads policing, uh, and Chief Fire Officer Dan Quinn uh, from Surrey Fire and Rescue Service, who's the um, National Fire Chief's lead for road safety um, and road rescue. So their support has been amazing and, it, and it's great to know that they're, they're going to be supporting us again uh, in 2024. Uh, and, it, and it really has just been an amazing way of bringing everybody uh, together. Whoever, you know, whether you've been affected personally or not, uh, if you care about safety on the roads uh, and reducing road harm, then there's a role for you in this challenge. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been absolutely incredible to see the things that people have done to raise awareness and raise money. I was going to share with you the video from last year, but I've got a horrible feeling that my sound is not going to share. <laughs> Just let me uh, check it's connected properly. Uh... Are you going to hear that? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Phew.
thank you for watching that. And yeah, just just sort of shows just how what a varied event it was last year and and it has been year on year um and the impact that it made um and and the the real work that was put in by the emergency services in uh the events that they were doing the fundraising the awareness raising the use of social media has been incredible uh using our hashtags and um really getting the people talking about the important issues here um so this year's concept, um, so we're going to collectively walk, run, cycle or horse ride 1,766 miles during the week of action, which as you know is May 13th to the 19th, 2024. And we'll do this collectively to honour the 1,766 people reported killed on UK roads in 2022, which is of course the last available data we have from the Department for Transport that we'll, we'll use um, and we'll be counting down. So we'll start at 1,766 and we'll count down to zero to reflect our efforts towards Vision Zero. Um, and this will be an incredible way of working together, a simple way of working together, but a really powerful, we hope, way of demonstrating that huge number of road deaths that we see and that we saw in 2022 and hopefully support the work of the, uh, the partnerships and forces are putting in at the moment to Vision Zero across the country and we've seen quite a number of Vision Zero um, projects launching across across the UK. So anybody can take part, no distance is too short. So we hope you won't just want to walk one mile, but even if you did want to just walk one mile, that would be one uh, mile taken off our grand total uh, that we're trying to chip away at. Um, you can do that alone or as part of a team. Uh, you can do a little each day or you could do one big event. So if you're a cyclist or a runner or a, you like going on big walks, if you want to do that with a big team of people on just one day during that week of action, that's great. Or if you are quite active on a day to day basis or you fancy a bit of a challenge each day yourself, that's great as well. Um, and each individual will record their miles travelled. Um, so if you had a team of uh, 10 of you uh, and you did 10 miles, that would be counting as 10 miles each. Uh, so, yeah, the more the merrier, the more people we can get involved in this, the more likely we are to reach our target. Um, and we'll be submitting, we'll be inviting you to submit your miles to Road Peace. We'll be recording them centrally and giving regular updates on how we're getting on and how far off we are from that target. And we'll be doing fundraising via Just Giving, as we have in previous years, and that's worked really, really well uh, in getting donations in. So how can you take part? Um, you can sign up on the Road Peace website right now. Uh, if you go onto the uh, homepage of the Road Peace website, uh, roadpeace.org, uh, you can click on the link at the top there in the purple band and you can fill in a very quick form and it just shows that you'd like to be part of this. You can decide near the time exactly how you'd like to be part of it but it just gives us an indication of how many forces, um, individuals, organisations across the country would like to be part of this. And we can obviously do anything, everything in our power to kind of support you with that, uh, give you the resources that you need that we'll develop in due course um, and um, keep in touch with, with updates from different areas of the country and things that we're working on uh, as part of this event. So during the week of action, we'll be asking you to log your miles every day and submit to Road Peace Online. Uh, there will be some uh, a feature on the website where you can simply log your miles uh, on an online form. And then that will, we'll, as I say, keep, keep updating you on how the total is going um, and keep hopefully everybody uh, motivated to do more and more. Uh, and we'll be, be asking you to, when you're out and about, walking, running, cycling, horse riding, uh, to post on social media with a photo of you in action. Uh, we'll be having Road Peace 
t-shirts for you to wear for people who want to take part so obviously that will um very much help to raise awareness about road peace and the challenge um, and we'll have uh, the hashtags for this year are road peace challenge 2024 and 1766 miles together which again reminds people why we're doing it what we're doing and the significance of it and the fact that this is this is us working together um we're not going to sit back any longer and just see year in year out the the, the numbers stay the same we're going to try and do something about this together and certainly raising awareness about the problem is a huge part of that um and we're going to ask you to put the link to just giving in that as well um we'll have a sort of master road piece just giving page for the road piece challenge which we've had uh, since since we set the concept up um, and you can use this or you can set up your own uh, account which can be linked to that main road piece account as well so it, it doesn't matter whatever's easier for you um, but either way we just love people to be to be reminding people how they can make a donation if they'd like to support this event so that's all the fundraising side of it but in terms of the awareness raising, if that is something that is really, really what you'd like to do, there are other things you can do. And people have certainly gone above and beyond in this respect in the past. Um, last year, uh, PC Emily Bunkle from Northamptonshire Police, who I think might be on the call, um, maybe say hi, Emily, if you're there. Um, and Nicole Taylor, who is um, a bereaved mum and a campaigner, who's been a, an incredible road peace supporter for a number of years. Um, they placed 1,572 symbols at Abington Park um, in Northamptonshire, which is a beautiful park I visited last year myself. Uh, and they put the symbols here to represent the number of people killed and injured on Northamptonshire's roads in one year. Uh, and as you can imagine, it took an incredible amount of time and effort to do this. Uh, they even had the correct markers for the different kind of vehicles that were involved in the crashes and the different casualties, which was just incredibly thoughtful and took a, a, yeah, an awful lot of time. So anybody visiting that park for, I think it might have been a week. Again, Emily, if I'm saying anything wrong here, do chip in. Um, but it was it was certainly there in a public place for a long time. So anybody going about having a walk, family, friends would have come across this uh, and seen this. And hopefully that sparked some interest and some curiosity and hopefully, yeah, raised awareness about the problem uh, to anybody passing. So certainly, Emily, it can share uh, with you. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to let you know what she did to make that happen. But it definitely took a lot of work, I know, and she she put a lot of time into it with, with Nicole. I don't know if Emily's uh, on, but it's uh, seeing Will's on the lead for Rose Police in North Ants. Um, hi. And, we, and we will replicate that again, possibly in two parks in different parts of our county again this year. Oh, that's that's amazing. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, we also had where that display was. Um, we had an event for uh, half a day in the park as well, all based around road safety, using that as the as the draw. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and you can't walk past that without, you know, that that's going to catch your eye, isn't it? It's, it's incredible. And um, I really hope it did make some people think. And it's great to hear you're doing that again. So thank you. And just to clarify, I'm on and um, yeah, if they want to make contact with you, if they want any details, I will certainly help them to facilitate that being uh, placed elsewhere. Thank you, Emily, and well done. It was amazing and it's great to hear you doing that again. Are you, are you. you starting now? <laughs> yes, to get everything we are. Ready? <laughs> we are indeed. So we've got everything from last year, but as the inspector said, we're looking to put it in two places, either side of the county. Um, and I think it's we talk about facts, figures, numbers. Um, and I think people become complacent and don't really interpret them to the true devastation that's caused. So just uh, sort of unassuming, if you like, come across it. Um, statement is made um, and I, I think the reality in the county is, is really identified and it is certainly food for thought for people um, in, in how they drive and what they can do to uh, alter their behaviours. Yeah. 
That's that's great. And that's the thing, it's out of context, isn't it? You're not expecting to see a road safety display. You're just in a public place and then you come across something which really hopefully makes you stop and think. So that that's great. Thank you. <laughs> and, and and another really amazing, powerful example here uh, was uh, what Sergeant Paul Cording from North Yorkshire Police did back in 2022 with school children uh, in, I think it was in Harrogate. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Paul got the obviously the, to represent the figure of the number of people killed on the county's roads in the previous year he got the children to all lie on the uh, on the floor um in and, and i think somehow managed to get a drone photograph taken of it i don't really know how he did this but he was he has been a, a huge supporter of the road peace challenge over previous years and uh, i think uh last year or the year before he got the uh, award for the most number of social media posts single-handedly uh, in support of this challenge he's a very committed and dedicated person but i that picture was just such a um an eye-catching and, and really symbolic thing and and um yeah he made that happen maybe we can make that happen again somehow this this year and talking of schools you know i think schools can play a really important part in this campaign um, and we certainly work with schools in the past but not on a very huge scale but if you do have links with local schools and i don't know if we've got any teachers um <clears throat> on the call at all if we have or Anybody who, who knows a good way of maybe reaching out to multiple schools, either in their county or nationally in one go, um, that would be incredibly helpful because this is so simple that, you know, kids just walk into school or cycling or scooting to school could simply be adding up their miles throughout the week and submitting that. And, and you know, if we could get even just one class or a few, even just a few people from one school doing it, that's again, lots more awareness being raised and hopefully um you know that's going to chip away at that total there um so that will be really really helpful and what we will do is um we'll be able to share with you sort of a template um story to provide to schools so if they are interested in supporting it I know they have sort of like newsletters that go out to parents and, and children um, about their activities for the week ahead, you know, and they obviously have lots of events in the diary uh, where you're encouraged to take part. So, you know, ahead of the Road Peace Challenge, next week's the Road Peace Challenge, you know, we're going to be walking, logging our miles, submit your miles, maybe via the head teacher or something like that. But we can help with that. And then again, that's a consistent message and that um can go into any newsletters or social media that, that the school may use so we'll be in touch with you about that so why take part um i think we probably already uh said said why but um it's so important that we raise awareness about this number of unacceptable deaths and injuries on our roads and like emily bunkle just said then people do sort of forget that when we talk about these numbers we're actually talking about real people and real families who've been had their lives torn apart um every single one of those numbers every single one of those 1677 is is um it, it represents a real person and a, and a real family and a real community and i think that's why the challenge is such a unique event because it brings real families who've been through this tragedy to come forward and share their stories if they want to um, be part of this together and again with emergency services who see only only too well the devastation every single day um, and, it, and it's a way of us acknowledging that amazing work that the emergency services do and, sta and, and, and standing side by side really um, and re so and obviously that side of it the awareness but raising awareness about road peace uh, and funding at the same time obviously we provide um, a lot of support for people um, who've been bereaved or seriously injured in a crash um, and it, it really does provide a lifeline for so many people and it's so important that you know we rely on funding uh, and fundraising so if we can raise some money for road, pe road peace in the process that will be that will be amazing and at this point, I was just going to hand over to Detective Chief Superintendent Andy Cox from the Met Police, who, as we've said, 
uh, helped to found this event. Um, Andy, are you on the call? I am. Thanks, Rebecca, and thanks so much for, for the run through. And it's um, morning, everybody. It's so good to, to see so many people online. Um, I suppose just to build on what Rebecca said, um, you know, when I look back at it's amazing this is year four that we've done at Challenge Four. So, yeah, the first one was just essentially, I think it was about New Year's Day 2021. Um, bit of a New Year's resolution. I thought I'd better do something for charity and saw this is a real big opportunity to uh, to talk about an issue that doesn't really get the coverage you know, it deserves or needs. Um, so contacted Road Peace, um, designed a challenge, um, which was initially going to be sort of just a relatively short run, which turned, I think, into over 200 kilometres. I can't remember now, but um, from the first road crash to the Arboretum. Um, and I think, you know, it's it, it, to see so many people online, to see so much sort of coverage that it's had in national media, television, radio, brought, um, you know, uh, newspapers, um, to see the amount of participants grow, to see it turn into you know, national policing event. I think huge thanks to Joe Shiner, obviously Chief Constable, who's endorsed it, supported it, taken part herself, um, to Carl Gordon, who was there in the first on the first day to to cheer me on. He didn't go on the run, but he was there to cheer me on. <laughs> but um but you know, so it's, and you know, then police and everybody that's taken part and so many people online, um, very much the team effort, um, the support from Road Peace has been um amazing. Um, and it could not have um, delivered what it has um, without the support of many people online, but particularly, obviously, you know, yourself, Rebecca, yourself, um, Sarah, um, who have you know, been absolutely brilliant throughout it. Um, I think some of the events that you showcased there, um, be interesting to see how that um, can be repeated and developed. Um, I love the idea of running a mile, obviously representing the fatal fatalities from last, last year. Um, I think that we've got other emergency services involved, um, other agencies involved um, is brilliant because, you know, which I keep sort of saying, obviously it's not a, it's not a policing issue, it's a multi-agency issue. Um, it needs multi-agency coverage, um, you know, real game changer mindset really to, to, to try and change the issue because the initial concept was, of course, to raise money for road piece, which is brilliant. I think we've done that very successfully. A lot of my ambition, as you know, is much, much more than it than it's currently raised, but it's brilliant regardless. Um, but I think ultimately it's to, to prevent the need for road peace to exist without being rude to road peace employees. That's obviously the ultimate aim. And I think, you know, having that um, collective multi-agency effort um, is exactly what's needed. So it's brilliant to see so many different people online with different backgrounds, different organisations um, and different things they can bring to the table to make this a much wider issue. I think it's going to sort of expand more. Um, so really um, do whatever you can to get everybody else involved. Um, and I know there's other people on who are not obviously been able to make today that are, are keen to take part as well. Um, this year I want to really do something different myself um, in terms of making it. Um, the trouble is you're always trying to improve it on the previous year and it's, it increasingly gets more difficult. So um but you know that's going to be quite exciting in terms of designing that um and anybody who wants to sort of connect with me around that would be brilliant um but really just just summary for me is you know thank you so much for, for everybody dialing in i think it's a great opportunity to number one have fun as well because actually i found it enjoyable and i think collectively as a bit of a um a team you know we've got a we've got a strong unity to, to make a change here so i think having that sort of uh, collective voice, collective effort, um, I say it's fun, but ultimately, you know, we're going to hopefully have a massive impact as well and, and ultimately raise some money as well. Um, so thanks as much, Rebecca. Thank you, Andy. That's, that's great. <clears throat> so corporate support as well. Um, I think we might have some companies on the call at the moment. Don't worry, I'm not going to suddenly try and single anyone out and ask for any money. Uh, but, <laughs> but if you did decide to make a donation to support the Road Peace Challenge, uh, it's an um, it's a brilliant way of aligning your company with safer roads, informing and educating stakeholders by elevating victims' voices, uh, applauding the work of the emergency services. Obviously, many of those are on the call now. Um, acknowledging and supporting road crash victims and campaigning for justice and a fairer society, which are obviously fantastic things to support and to stand for. So we've largely covered the things that we wanted to talk about. Uh, but does anybody have at this stage any questions? Or any comments or anything that you'd like to say? 
something in the chat here. Hello, Rebecca, it's Emily. So in our previous years, uh, we've focused on themes for the days during the week. Are there any plans for us to do the same? And if so, obviously around our planning, you know, we have to balance policing purpose v the, the road piece element. Um, and we usually focus around the fatal five, but I just wondered what your thoughts were around that. Yeah, um, we, we've we kind of tried to strike a balance this year by not wanting to be too prescriptive, but also wanting to be clear enough about what the what the, the, the plan is. Somebody said, can they swim miles? Well, I guess you can. I mean, <laughs> I suppose that would be also raising awareness. You know, that's fine. Whoever's just asked that question, please do swim away and, and, and share that on social media. And yes, I guess we've We've envisaged using the roads um, and using that in terms of miles covered. But if you'd like to swim, we're definitely not going to stand in your way there. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, um, yeah Emily, I think um, we will very much be trying to um, support the uh, campaigns that Road Peace is supporting um, and running at the moment. So we've got a justice campaign, Fix Our Broken Justice System, and we've got a number of families who are part of that. Um, so some of our messaging will be around the justice system and will be a really good opportunity for us to um, promote that th throughout the week. Um, and also um, we've, we're about to launch uh, a campaign working with um, bereaved parents who are calling for the government to take note and to support uh, a graduated driving licensing scheme in the UK. So that's another thing that we will probably be um, focusing on throughout the week as well. So rather than having specific themes on specific days, I think we'll have sort of messaging that will be um, promoted throughout the week and there'll be opportunities to link in with that. And obviously we will um, We'll kind of share that uh, plan with you a little bit nearer to the time. But if you've got any of your own pressing messages, obviously you, every county has its own issue in terms of casualties, uh, uh, you know, and obviously overall we're all in the same boat. But if there is anything specific that you feel you'd like to put out as part of that, that would be great. Um, are there any other? I'm just looking on the chat here. Sorry to go quiet. Um, any questions coming in on the chat? Yeah, and that's a really great point, Joy, that you've made there, that the Road Peace Challenge is now on the NPCC uh, Roads Policing Operations Calendar, which is really, really great. And thank you so much to the NPCC for putting us on there. Um, and yes, we'll certainly be issuing guidance and information in the run up to this um, this challenge this, this is going to be my main focus now for, for the foreseeable so um as you've shown your interest obviously we've got this form for you to sign up to the, the challenge officially um, but anybody who joined this call today will continue to share our plans and our news and updates around the challenge and giving you ideas and giving you access to resources and things like that to help you um so we can all look at doing this consistently together um the 19th of May, someone's put here, is British Superbike Weekend at Donington Park. That's just in the next village to me, uh, as a large number of victims of bikers may be an event there. I mean, that's a great idea. And if anybody from Leicestershire Police is on the call and wants to um, look at doing something at Donington Park, certainly I'm in the next village. <laughs> I'll happily turn up with some road piece representation for that. This is a really good example of just thinking of things that are happening and that's an obviously a very timely event. So if anybody's got any events or any ideas of how we th this could really kind of come into the challenge and, and link the two together, um, please let us know. Um, and we've got um, Terry Cunningham, Cunningham here. Uh, would the Minister for Transport, Road Safety, MPs, um, like to be involved to highlight the week and we'll certainly be encouraging them to and if you have you know local MPs in your your own area who are particularly supportive of these issues we've certainly seen in recent months um real support from from across the country from MPs uh on 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 road with road collisions and road injury um so if you uh, have any connections with your local MPs please do spread the word help us yeah. to to spread the word about the challenge Hi. Hi Rebecca, it's Terry. Um, yeah, I'm Hi, meeting Terry. 
Damien Moore on Friday, actually, at two o'clock. Uh, he's the local MP for Southport. So um, and it was a question for him as regards to you know, how do we widen the circle here? Because I'm assuming it's coming into an election year. Um, and, you know, you know, being cynical, but they'll look for any opportunity. And I think it's a great opportunity to spread the word, isn't it? So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, somebody, uh, Faye, uh, Faye Cannon. Hi, Faye. Uh, she's saying, is there an event at the National Memorial Arboretum at the Road Peace Wood on the last day, as in previous years? So that will be the Sunday, the 19th of May. Uh, yes, that is certainly our intention to do that again. That, that is just such an incredible way of bringing everybody together uh, to mark the end of that week of, of action. And I think what would be really, really nice this year uh, this is just me thinking out loud here, but I, I'm hoping this can happen, is that we arrange for people to meet us a mile outside of the wood. In fact, anyone who's been to the Arboretum will know it's almost a mile from the door to the <laughs> to the wood anyway. But maybe there'll be a point we can meet just on the outside of the Arboretum and we can all come in together, which I think would be, just be such a powerful way of showing our solidarity. There'll be you know, all sorts of people can all come in together at the same time. Um, so, yes, in answer to your question, Faye, there will be uh, an event again at the Arboretum and we'd love as many people as possible to be there. Um, it really is a beautiful place to visit if you've not been to the National Memorial Arboretum before. Um, it, it's a beautiful place to go and the Rugby Peace Wood is, is wonderful in it beautiful location and it really is a symbolic place for for victims and, and bereaved families to visit and you'd be very very welcome to come but again we'll, we'll share more details with you about that um obviously in due course um there will be um information that you can share we've had a question here do you have a comms package uh that's from james thank you jj we will have a, a package that you can share with colleagues um, things that you can put out on social media to say that you're taking part and encourage others to take part as well. We'll be working on those resources over the next, over the coming weeks, and we'll share them with you as soon as they're all available and ready to go. Um, but yeah, please do sign that form on the website, on the homepage, and then we will know that you're definitely interested in being part of this. And we'll, of course, make sure that you get all, the, all of those updates. Um, and just also to point out, we are recording this as well, as you may have seen. So therefore, we'll, we'll make sure this is made available to, it, to you as well. So if that helps, just to be able to share this link with anybody uh, internally or who or, or externally who wasn't able to make the call, um, then you can do that as well. Um, just checking if we've got any other messages. Um, people are walking. Great. OK. Has anyone got anything else they would like to ask at this stage? Any more comments or questions or anything like that? No. So I think that probably wraps it up, to be honest. Um, our concept, I think, is is straightforward this year, I think. Hopefully everybody has understood what we're what we're wanting and hopefully this will give you a chance now to go away and have a real think about how you might like to take part. Um, but yeah, please do think of any ways that you can involve others, work together. Um, you know, it's great when we've got sort of police forces or emergency services in one particular region, you know, maybe rather than doing it as one force or uh, one uh, fire service, you know, maybe they can come together um, and form a kind of collective group. So maybe there's a chance to do a cycle um, with two forces or two two um, two groups working together. And we can always help put people in touch if we're aware that things are happening in one area. We can maybe even suggest, you know, that 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 there's some teaming up going on just to make that message even stronger. And obviously, as we get nearer to the challenge, there'll be lots of lots of opportunity then for us to be putting out news releases. Uh, we'll be doing that anyway, um, giving you ideas for news stories and working with the media and really getting the most out of the message that you're trying to put out. Um, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so, so much for being on the call. Thank you for participating. 
Um, I'll be sending you the recording from today um, or the slides, whichever you prefer, I'll send both. Um, and that will just give you, um, yeah, something to think about. Let us know, sign, sign the form. <laughs> Let us know that you'd like to take part. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch again very soon. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you ever so much. Thank you.